Hi guys, so today's video is going to be one that many of you have requested and that is how I do my own acrylic nails at home. And for this video, I'm going to be showing you from start to finish how I do these super cute pink glitter ombre nails. And this is one of my most complimented and favorite nail designs. This is actually going to be my second time doing it. So yeah, just keep watching. So this is what my natural nails are looking like before. I'm just going to take one of these nail cleansing pads with 91% alcohol and I'm going to cleanse my natural nail beds just to make sure that there are no oils or anything on my nails. And then I'm going to take my stainless steel cuticle pusher and push back my cuticles. And I'm going to take my tweezerman nail clippers, my straight edge nail clippers, and I'm going to clip my natural nails pretty much as short as possible. And I do this because I don't like for any of my natural nail to show under my acrylic nails. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and clip off any of the white tips at the very end of my nails. And this is what it looks like after clipping and pushing the cuticles back. So this is the nail drill that I use. It's from Melody Suzy. I love this nail drill. It's portable and rechargeable and the charge lasts a super long time. Um, the first drill that I had was actually from them as well, but it was a plug-in drill, but I love this one because it's super cute and compact and it goes up to 35 RPM. So it's really powerful as well. I'm going to take a 180 grit sanding band and just put that on my drill and I'm just going to prep my natural nail. So I'm going to first go around the cuticle area. I'm going to remove any of that white flaky dead skin on the cuticles or around the cuticles. And then I'm going to file the natural nail bed itself just lightly. Um, the goal here on the natural nail bed is just to remove the shine. So you don't want to file too much. Uh, which is why I have a low RPM. It's just a light filing. Really, you want to concentrate a lot on those cuticles. You want to make sure you get all of that removed. That's a very important step to ensure that your nails don't have any lifting. So this is what my prepped nails look like after clipping, filing, and removing the cuticles. So today I'm gonna to be using this KDS glue, which is pretty good, especially for the price. I also use another glue, which has a brush on applicator, which is a little bit easier and more controlled application. I will link both down below. So I'm gonna be using these clear long coffin tips. So one thing when measuring out your sizes for your tips, you wanna make sure the tip goes from sidewall to sidewall or edge to edge. And if it's a little bit small, just go ahead and go up to the next size and clip off a little bit of the extra. It's always better to have a bigger tip and just clip the extra than use one that's too small. Make sure you clip off a very, very tiny amount and then just measure it to your nail and you can always clip a little bit more if you need to. And one thing about these pre-shaped coffin tips, it makes the job so much easier. In the past, I've used tips that were not pre-shaped and it required a lot of filing. So, so if you're going with the coffin shape, buy coffin tips. If you want stiletto, buy stiletto tips. If you want square, buy square tips. It'll just make your life so much easier. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tips to the desired length that I want. And what I do is I just cut off the size numbers at the end of the tips and that gives me the length that I personally like. And then I'm gonna put on a new sanding band. I like to use a fresh one for this. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm blending the tip with my nail bed. I don't wanna see where that tip ends and where my natural nail begins. So I'm just gonna file right where the tip meets my natural nail, but being careful not to actually file my natural nail.
Now, once I blended the tips, this is what it looks like. You'll see that that line is no longer showing and I'm just going to dust off my nails with this brush. I love this brush, by the way, super soft. And this is my new super cute monomer jar. I love it so much. And the monomer that I'm using, I'll link below. I'm actually gonna be using a little bit of a new monomer as well because I am running low as you can see. So it's not the same monomer, but I'll link both of them down below for you guys. As well as of course, everything that I'm using in this video will be down below, including my brush here. I'm using a alpha number 10 brush and I'm just gonna let that sit in the monomer. My acrylic powders are from Lee Beauty. I'm going to be mixing together the light pink and dark pink. So I'm making my own custom shade. So that's what it looks like once mixed. I'm also going to be using their clear acrylic powder as well. And then I have this super chunky holographic glitter. I actually had this even before I started doing nails. I just had it laying around. I don't even know why I had it, but one day I had the idea to use it for my nails and I uh, love how it turned out for that. I'm gonna be using these nail prep and nail bonds from Carlash. So one, step one is a dehydrator and step two is the primer. So I'm going to apply the dehydrator first. And then I'm going to apply the primer liberally. So I'm gonna be using bounty paper towels. Just make sure whatever you're using is very absorbent. I'm then gonna dip into my monomer, wipe off one side, go into my clear acrylic, and then dip into my glitter. And I'm gonna start by applying that at the tip of the nail, and then I wanna work that glitter upward. That way it gives an ombre effect, so you want most of the glitter to be at the tip, and then kinda disperse it going upward. For this first nail, I did grab a little bit too much monomer and acrylic powder. It had been about six months since I did my nails, so I was kinda trying to get back into the feel and the groove of everything, but eventually I got it right, so just don't grab as much um, monomer and powder as I did. And also, it's good to let the powder sit on the brush for a second with the monomer before you go into the glitter. That way it's not too wet when you apply it to your nail and that'll make it easier to work with as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue that process on the rest of my nails. And once again, guys, everything that I'm using in this video will be conveniently linked down below for you guys. By the way, if you are curious, I am 100% self-taught with my nails. I've been doing it for almost three years now and I didn't go to any classes or anything like that. I'm not a professional. I just pretty much watched some videos, um, did some research on good products and kind of did trial and error on my own to see what worked for me and what I liked. I personally like doing my nails more than going to any salon. I like the way my nails look over any salon or any professional I've ever gone to. And it's also just because I'm really really picky about my nails so I can get them exactly how I want them when I do them at home and also I get more compliments believe it or not on my nails when I do them myself over any nails that I've had before uh, from going to a salon so it's a win-win for me I'm saving money and I'm loving how my nails are turning out they're turning out exactly how I want and when you have everything at home if something breaks if your nail breaks or whatever you can just fix it you don't have to schedule an appointment or sit in a salon it's just really nice to be able to do it in the comfort of your own home
So after I apply the glitter, I'm going to go into the clear acrylic and I'm going to cover the glitter. I'm not covering the whole nail because at the top of the nail, I'm going to be using the pink acrylic to create the ombre effect. And something else that's very important is you want to make sure you are frequently wiping your brush off as you apply your acrylic as well and also switch out your paper towel or fold your paper towel periodically. So then I'm going to add more monomer. This is the new monomer. It did work pretty good. It worked pretty much the same. So I will have that linked down below as well as the other one that I used. So now I'm going to begin applying the pink acrylic mix that I made and I'm going to place the first bead right where the glitter starts and I'm going to work that down. Now you'll see again for my first bead it was too big but I did make my adjustments um, going forward so I didn't make that mistake again. But if that happens to you just try to work with it best you can. You can always file it down if it is too much. And then I'm just going to work upward from where I placed the first bead until I reach the cuticle area and I'm applying less acrylic as I go upward. And you'll see how I'm stopping a second after I dip into the powder. You wanna just let that acrylic and monomer set for a second in the brush before you go directly on the nail. And that will ensure that your acrylic does not fall off the brush and also that it's not too wet. Don't prove me wrong, prove you right. My word is bond, we don't spit, no.
and I don't know how or why this is, but I am right-handed, but I'm able to do my right hand with my left hand even better than I do my left hand with my right hand. I don't know how or why that is, but I always like the way my right hand looks more. So it might just be because, you know, my left hand's not my dominant hand. Maybe I'm being more careful and more gentle when I'm doing my right hand with my left. I don't know, whatever it is, I need to learn how to do that with the other side as well because I always like the way my right hand looks better than my left. Take it away, take it away, feeling too good to me. Chilling all day, all in your space is where I wanna be. Here in this room, what did you do? I just can't get enough. Too caught up in your love. I've been trying to forget, but you won't let me. Something in my brain wants you. I've been hanging by myself. Asking for help, but nothing seems to work on you. Yeah, you always make me feel like oh yeah. You never leave my thoughts alone. Yeah, you. You're the reason I'm going out of my mind. I just can't stop thinking. So after I apply the acrylic, I'm gonna go in with my nail file. You wanna tap your nails, actually I didn't show this, but you wanna tap your nail with the file just to make sure it's all the way dry before you do this. But I'm just going in and gently filing the sides of the nail. I'm not trying to shape it, but any acrylic that may have gone over, I just wanna kinda redefine that coffin shape. So I'm just filing lightly on each side of the nail. And then I'm also gonna do the same for the tips of the nails, just to keep that straight edge shape. Okay. 
And then I'm going to start filing with my drill and nail bit. So I'm gonna be using this five in one carbide bit from Pana. And this one goes from extra fine to fine. So I'm going to concentrate first on the cuticle area. So this is called sealing the cuticle. This is a very important step if you don't want to have lifting. So I'm going around the cuticle very carefully and then I'm gonna file over the whole nail as well just to get rid of any lumps and bumps and create the shape that I want. So how good you do on your application will determine how much filing you have to do afterwards. When I first started doing my nails, I had to do a lot, a lot of filing with my drill. But as I started, you know, getting more experienced and learning application a little bit more, um, I had to do less filing. So just keep that in mind, you guys. But yeah, cuticle is my, the cuticle area is what I'm definitely concentrating more on because you don't want your acrylic to be super thick at the cuticle you want it to be very thin so that way you don't get any lifting And after I filed the top of the nail, I'm just gonna go underneath the nails just to get any little bit of acrylic that may be there. I'm going to be using two buffers. One's a little bit coarser than the other. I'm gonna start with the coarser buffer and I'm gonna file over the top of my nails. And again, this is just to rid any lumps and bumps. Also gonna file the tips. And then I'm gonna go over top and pretty much do the same thing with the finer grit buffer. And this is just gonna really make sure the nails are super, super smooth. And then I'm going under and filing side to side just to make sure that those edges are really crisp and clean. And after that, I'm gonna go wash my hands. I'm gonna use this nail brush. I'm just demonstrating what I do, but I did that off camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply a gel top coat. This is a tempered top coat. It's scratch resistant, it's really good. And I'm going to apply, I believe I did two coats on this and I'm gonna cure for 60 seconds. And my nail lamp, this is a very good nail lamp. It's 84 watts. You wanna make sure you pay attention to the watts of your nail lamp when you are purchasing one because that does affect your cure time. I can definitely get away with 30 second cure time with this lamp, but I always do 60 just because I'm extra. And I love the step of putting on the top coat at the end because you can really see the nails come to life after you remove that dullness and you put that clear coat on top and it just pops. And last but not least, I'm just going to apply some of this nourishing cuticle oil. And this is the 
finished result. So this is one, this is probably my favorite nail design that I do on myself. This once again is my second time doing it. I will say I like the first time I did it a little bit better, but that's probably because it's been so long since I've done my nails. Again, it's been about six months, but nonetheless, I really, really love them. Super, super cute and pretty. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And if you want to see me do my nails more in the future, like this video and let me know in the comments as well and yeah thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll see you guys in my next one